everyone, it's Ben Zinn with NextLevelGuitar.com. Thanks for joining us today. And in this lesson, we're going to take a look at how to build up our own jam tracks using a looper pedal. This is such a fun way to practice and a fun way to play. And I really enjoy all the possibilities that we have now with all these different looper pedals that are out from really simple small ones to ones that you know have every possible feature that you can imagine. It's really easy to make this a part of our guitar time, building up tracks and using them as a means to, to play and to jam. So that's what we're going to talk about today, kind of how to think about building a track using a looper pedal. It's almost like... Uh, instantaneous songwriting, right? So it's a lot of fun. And uh, let's go ahead and jump right in and talk about our first concepts. So anytime that I sit down with my looper pedal, I like to think about, I think the basic way to do it is to kind of think about like a, a uh, percussion or rhythm kind of part, some sort of rhythm, uh, maybe some sort of bass line, and then a guitar part. So that's a simple way to get three pieces working together. And then I can start to jam or play lead over the top of those once I have them built up. So if I think about those things as separate ways, then I can really have a nice jam track, I think. So our first jam track, I'm going to let it play here a little bit, and then we'll talk about how to break it down. So there's three parts going on right there. I have a drum part, drums. I have a bass part, and then I have a guitar part, and they're all kind of working together. So I can break these things down. Here we hear just the drums, okay? So let's talk about that first. In order to mimic that sort of sound, uh, what I've done here is I've kind of found a way to play percussively on the guitar, and this is going to vary for, from guitar to guitar. Kind of find what works for you. But what I like to do is mute the strings over here, right? So that nothing comes through note-wise. And then I'm going to create some, some rhythm here with my right hand. And how I do that is I'm just going to pluck the sixth string. And I'm trying to think about that like a fake kick drum on a drum set. So I'm just looking for some something that thuds like a kick drum would, right? And then I'm going to try to recreate some sort of snare sound and for this particular track what I did was I did like a brush stroke where I kind of just brushed my fingers across the strings and so you just want to kind of create a pattern there You know, whatever sounds good to you, this is kind of a creative endeavor. So any kind of beat pattern that you like, stick that into your looper and get that going, right? Now I want to try to build off of this. Oftentimes the second thing that I'll do is to play something that's similar to a bass line. So kind of on the lower strings. I can start jamming, that kind of works, but I maybe want to add in a little bit of a flavor uh, chord wise. So for my chord section of this, I added a couple of chords over the top. Here's the voicings. Added a little bit of effects to this too to just give it a little bit different flavor. A little bit of delay in this case with some modulation. So that's an F minor. Kind of thinking about that like a B flat 13, but really it's just the same shape. Moved up a whole step. And so I'm going to alternate those two things over the top. Let's take a listen to the drums and bass again. Here's the bass. Okay, now let's add in those chord parts. noting that none of my parts are very busy because when you're creating a jam track you want to make sure that there's room for 
the other instruments. So now we have that playing back. Our jam track is complete, and we're ready to jam over the top of it, right? At this point, you can play lead, go to town, do it, whatever it is that you do. another example it doesn't have to be drums first in this case I might just start off with a repeated kind of bass line and, and build from there so you know there's no rule on how to do this these are all just kind of ideas that you can try for yourself <laughs> So we'll get the bass line repeated, right? Again, very simple, just repeated pattern. And now let's think about adding some drums over the top of that. This time let's do a different, slightly different technique. I'm still gonna use that kind of for my kick. But instead of doing the brush stroke, you can also just kind of snap a string, a muted string. And that kind of works to emulate a snare sound too, I think, so. Okay, so now we have like a drum pattern and a uh, bass pattern going over the top of that. So now we can add some chords to the top of this to fill it in. Now we have a simple two chord thing, we got a bass line, we got drums, and we're ready to go. So at this point, this is where it's fun to, again, again, I think just open up and try to improvise a little bit over the jam track they've created. how your looper works out maybe you want to kill one of the parts just back down the bass and drums then bring them back so the idea here is there's plenty of ways to do this I think if you keep it simple keep the loop short and just put the focus on the creativity of how all the pieces interlock, you can really come up with some cool stuff. So in the first example, we started with drums. In the second example, we started with bass. This time, let's start with some chords and see what happens with this approach. So again, kind of improvised songwriting, right? We're just trying to put together loops on the fly, and this can be a lot of fun. So in this example... Again, I'm just going to do a little two chord vamp here. We'll do some kind of fancy, fun, open chords here. Here we have. Okay, and then we're going to move that to. Make it more of a strummy kind of mellow thing, right? idea up in the higher range. So to just isolate that for a second, I'm just taking the 11th fret at the 
uh, first and second strings. And I'm just playing a little finger pick pattern here, kind of nice and quiet. <laughs> have a little bit of echo going on on my sound and I want to see how this kind of blends with the other two parts so now I have a nice little textural thing that I can play with now I'm free to improvise again single note lines lead playing whatever you want to do So we can kind of create our own vibe there uh, just based on how we stack up these different parts. And the basic idea of today is just, you know, think about interlocking parts, right? You got one part and then how do I get something that complements that and then complements that. Uh, just fun ways to, to build things up in our looper pedal. So I want to say thanks for checking out the lesson. Uh, head over to the website, nextlevelguitar.com. We have right now on the homepage a three-day free all-access pass, meaning you can check out the whole site, over 2,000 lessons. We have uh, videos for all players of all, every skill level and every genre that you could think of. So there's a lot there to check out. We'll really definitely help you in your guitar playing journey. That's what we're all about here at Next Level Guitar. So I want to say thanks again. I'm Ben Zinn, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>